So if you have your Bible with you, um, we're going to look at Exodus this week, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, um, and I will read that. This is um, part of the lectionary text that was um, what we would have read this week, uh, what I was planning to do a full sermon on. Um, so we're not, we're not changing our pattern of worship during Lent, but I did think that this verse, uh, this scripture passage had something to say to us right now, living in a time of uh, confusion, um, living in a time where it feels like we may be wandering in the wilderness in some ways. And so hear this, this words from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go, a go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with, with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? And this is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say, Thanks be to God. So this, this has been a crazy week, um, crazy couple of weeks. There has been schools canceled, there has been major events canceled, sporting events canceled, um, and now seemingly worship has been canceled. Um, but we're, we're, not, we're not totally canceled, we're, we're meeting virtually. Um, but I know that as all of us have been tracking this thing, as I have been tracking this thing and watching the news and, and keeping up to date, that I have, um, I have felt stressed out. And I'm sure that I'm not alone in that feeling. There have been uh, a lot of disruptions to our day-to-day -day lives, things that are just a regular part of what we do. Um, going to school, going to work, going to um, the grocery store especially have... Uh, looked drastically different this week, and they will probably for uh, the next few weeks. And I know, at least internally, at least sort of the way that I've been dialoguing with myself, um, I've been complaining about it a little bit. I've been grumbling about all of these disruptions. I've been complaining about uh, figuring out what I'm going to do with the Divinity School uh, classes moving to online and, and not meeting in person. I've been um, kind of grumbling about figuring out what we were going to do this week in terms of live worship and how that was going to impact people and, and, and just, a, just a whole host of things. I'm sure that you've been kind of thinking these things too. How, how is my life going to continue to be disrupted? And um, frankly, when, when the bishop reached out to the churches and urged uh, to cancel worship, I, I felt a sense of, of relief. I was relieved to have leadership that said during this chaotic and confusing time that it's, it's okay just to, to slow down. It's okay to take a pause and, and to not um, continue about our normal business when things around us aren't normal. So I was thankful for that leadership this week. Um, and when that got sent out and I was able to slow down and think about what we were going to talk about this week, I, I started to think about how all of this stress and change and complaints was really being fueled by something deeper, uh, by, by a feeling of being out of control, a feeling of being vulnerable. And that's scary for a lot of us. That's scary for all of us. There's a lot of fear associated with being totally vulnerable. 
And I, I, I think it's important to remember that the elderly in our communities and people who are immunocompromised are vulnerable right now. The healthcare professionals, the nurses and doctors who work at our hospitals are vulnerable right now. The healthcare system as a whole is vulnerable right now. And all of these are reasons to suspend worship, right? To suspend what we're doing normally so that we don't add to the spread of this disease or this virus, excuse me. Um, to do our part as a congregation to collectively care for the community as a whole. And I think it's important also to recognize because of these disruptions, people um, like children and families who depend on the school system uh, are for food, for their routine, for childcare, they are vulnerable right now. Small business owners and regular um, or hourly wage workers are vulnerable right now. And there are more examples for these reasons. And so as we suspend worship and, and socially distance ourselves, we also have to balance how we can respond um, to care for those needs in our community. And so we'll continue to do that here at Glendale Heights um, as we move forward. But as I reflect on this passage from Exodus chapter 17 and how the Israelites were in wilderness and they were in chaos and confusion because they they were thirsty and they didn't have water. They weren't in control of their situation. They were totally vulnerable. And it impacted each of them. And so they began to complain and grumble to their leader, Moses. Now Moses was frustrated because he knew these were the people that God had, had chosen to, to deliver from, from slavery in Egypt to uh, a land promised that would be flowing with milk and honey. And in their vulnerable state, the people of God had forgotten what God had done for them and what God had promised them. And Moses had faith that God would deliver them again. But ultimately, Moses, being a good leader, realized that there was real need and fear in his community for um, where they were going to find water. They were thirsty. And so ultimately, Moses cared for his people. He cared for them by providing them with water. And he cared for them in their wilderness experience, in their vulnerability, and their fear. And so this morning I want to reflect on three things that happened in this passage that I think might speak to us this morning as we go through an experience that feels um, like a wilderness experience, where we're not sure what's happening, where there's chaos and confusion and some fear, uh, and we feel vulnerable. So first, so first Moses prayed, and it wasn't a, a very eloquent prayer. It wasn't, um, it wasn't written up by a theologian. He, he simply cried out to God. He said he was, he was in a position where he didn't know what to do, and he said, God, what, what should I do with these people? They're thirsty, and they're about to stone me. And, and God answered Moses. I think it's important in this time of wilderness and confusion as a church and as a community, as uh, a nation and, and our world, that it's a good time to return to prayer. And um, in the disruption and stress and fear of this time, it's, it's okay to cry out to God and ask God what, um, what you should do. About um, It's okay to cry out to God and pray for, for your fear and to pray for those who are elderly, for those who are immunocompromised, uh, to pray for health care workers and our small business owners and hourly workers and our schools. In our prayers to God, we can find strength, we can find peace, and, and if, we, if we go deeper, we may even find um, joy and gratitude, uh, even in this time of chaos and confusion. And I think also it's important to pray because we can listen uh, for the voice of God to discern how each of us might be called to respond during this time. So the second thing that, I'm, uh, that I was reflecting on this week about this passage is that God reminded Moses that he already had all the tools he would need to provide for his people, right? For Moses, it was his staff, his group of elders, um, you know, the, the physical staff that he, he carried. Um, and for us this morning, it's technology. It is our phones and our screens and all of the ways that we can um, continue to worship together and be in community with each other, even when we can't be physically 
uh, together in person. So I don't know if this church has ever done a Facebook Live service. I um, know that this is certainly one of the first ones. And as we had to suspend worship in person, through technology, through the tools that we already had, we have been able to stay connected, to, um, to send out emails and phone calls to inform people that worship was canceled, uh, suspended. Um, and I know that last week in our sermon, I talked uh, at length about how our phones and screens had become distractions away from God. But I also mentioned that they were tools and resources to help us stay connected, to help us stay in community. And so this week we're taking advantage of the tools that we already had. In a matter of a few days, our church came together with the help of some key leaders uh, to send out communication, to let people know worship was suspended. We've set up a way to have um, video worship through Facebook Live We have um, sent out worship materials and guided devotions and emails, and and we've even created a YouTube channel, thanks to our lay leader, Tom Simmons. So um, this is incredible, right? Like the fact that we can't meet in person, but we can do all of these things and stay connected with the tools that we already have. And so I would encourage you this week to use these tools. Reach out to someone uh, on the phone. Call someone on the phone. Text someone. Email someone. Reach out on social media. And although we're physically distancing ourselves, we don't have to be, um, we don't have to be alone. We can still be in connection and community with each other uh, virtually and digitally. And I think that our community can continue to thrive with these tools of technology and will continue to provide spiritual care and nurturing as a congregation here, um, and it just may look a little bit different. So Bishop Sue Hoppert Johnson of the North Georgia Conference is advising all United Methodists to, to really lean into the connection. And I'll say that again. She's saying lean into the connection. I think sometimes when we just gather with our local congregation, we, we can forget that, that we're a global church, that we have a connection all over the world of churches. Um, right here in Durham, even, we have multiple United Methodist churches. We have, um, you know, for us, this Facebook Live thing is, is new. Um, it's, it's something we're just trying out for the first time. But a church like Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City has been doing this for years with Adam Hamilton. And and although we're providing just a simple scaled back meditation, they're providing a really quality worship service online that we can lean into our connection and and utilize those resources to, to, to still participate in worship. And so the third thing that, uh, I reflected on this week from this verse is that God made water come out of a rock. The Israelites were thirsty and God made water come out of a rock. God provided for what they needed and God will provide for us during this time. God is with us in the midst of this crisis. God has promised to be with those who are left out, who are forgotten, who are lonely, who are suffering, who are sick. And God has a way of making something come out of nothing. Quenching the thirst of a whole nation of people by making water come out of a rock is miraculous. And right now, because we can't worship in person, we're worshiping by video. And each of us is tuning in on our laptops or our screens. And that's pretty miraculous. Before technology, I I would have probably been riding the circuit on my trusty horse to every person's house to let them know worship was canceled and to pray for them, right? So whether it is Facebook Live or phone calls or perhaps comfort found from prayer, reading scripture, or spending some extra time at home with your loved ones, God will provide during this time. And I also think it's important that we remember that God can work through us to provide um, love and care to those around us. Maybe that's a friendly smile and a wave to a neighbor in lieu of a handshake. 
Uh, maybe it's a small donation to a nonprofit or buying a gift card from a restaurant so that you can go out and dine later, but you support the workers and the business owner there. Or maybe it's as simple as activating the prayer chain, calling people who are part of your network, part of your congregation, um, and letting them know that they're not alone, that, that they still have a faith community that's with them, that's praying for them, that loves them. Um, so God will provide in that way as well. So as we continue through Lent, let us be reminded that God is in control, that God is our strength, God is with us, and as the people of God, I would encourage all of us to be prayerful about ways that we can seek to rely more on God during this time of Lent and of confusion and wilderness. I think it's important now that we remember all of the ways that God has provided for us in the past, the things that God has done in our lives, the way God has kept us and strengthened us and guide, guided us through our lives and especially as we prepare through Lent to celebrate Easter uh, this year, to prepare our hearts and minds to remember ultimately what God did for us through Jesus Christ, um, the ultimate sacrifice of love um, and what Jesus did through his life, his death, and his resurrection. And for that we say thanks be to God. Amen.